How's it going? Jacob here with Smetting Performance. In today's video, I'm going to show you the different types of lifters and which ones you need to run in your engine. This video was suggested to us by a viewer, so if there's anything that you want to learn about or anything that you would like us to explain, leave me a comment below and we'll make it happen. We're going to go left to right in order of when you need to step up to the next level of lifter. So on our far left here, we have your standard Delphi GM Caddy LS7 LS lifter. Um, this lifter is, goes by itself. It has a plastic tray that kind of goes over it and lines up these flats so that the wheel turns with the camshaft. Obviously being roller lifters, you don't want this to pivot or turn because then as the cam opens it, it could really cause an issue. So with this type of lifter, you're relying on a plastic tray basically to keep it straight. Personally, I would not run these lifters in anything turning anything above 7,000 RPM. Now, before I get flagged in the comments, yes, I am totally aware that people turn more RPM with this type of lifter. I'm just st stating what I personally would recommend. At Smetic Performance, we are big fans of long-term durability, and with the amount of money that these CTSV or Caddy race lifters, whatever you want to call them, cost, you are so close to getting a very nice set of link bar lifters that are super adequate. So stock rebuild stuff with the mild spring pressure, mild RPM, no problem. This lifter will do you just fine. But as soon as you start getting into the world of RPM, higher spring pressures, faster camshaft ramps, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and upgrade to a set of link bar lifters. I think these caddy lifters now go for almost 400 bucks when we sell these for just under 500 and you get the link bar, you can delete the plastic trays out of the motor, and it's a no-brainer in my opinion. So anyways, quick brief on that, moving up. And this is a hydraulic lifter, of course. So moving into this guy, we have an aftermarket Gatorman link bar lifter. It has larger axles built into it. It has a stronger steel body, and of course, we have that link bar design. Now with the link bar, both lifters are tied together so they cannot rotate or turn. They have to stay perfectly in line with the camshaft. And these lifters are great for your, you know, street strip combo, has a nice cam, has a set of, I don't know, BTR 660 dual springs, um, you know, all standard stuff. Nothing super radical, but definitely performance oriented. And these are great. We have run these in big block Chevys. Uh, for a very long time, we've had great luck with them in you know low 7,000 RPM LS combos with about 400 to 420 open spring pressure, and I love them. Um, once you start getting into the 75, 7,600 RPM territory, or maybe you're running a valve spring that has mid to high, maybe 500 pounds of spring pressure on the nose, then I might start upgrading. We might go into our next step. And that's gonna be these Johnson lifters. Now, in the Johnson family, we carry four of their different lifters that are available on our website. They're all the link bar versions. The standard ones are their basic Johnson link bar. So they don't have axle oiling and they have a standard depth plunger travel. And we'll talk more about plunger travel in a second before we jump to these lifters. So, uh, the Johnson Lifter's got a few upgrades. Um, again, it has a super high strength tool steel body just like the Gatorman. It's got an upgraded axle over factory, and they're great. But what's nice about them is they also offer axle oiling and or short travel plunger. So first, let's talk about axle oiling. Let's go to this guy. So on these lifters, if you take a look at them, you can see that we actually have an oil feed hole down towards the bottom of the lifter. And that lifter galley is gonna take high pressure oil coming from the block and is going to split it and send a good majority of it up into the push rod to lubricate the valve train and to cool off the valve springs, as well as some of it goes and high pressure feeds the axle. So again, if you're running a very high spring pressure and axle oiling for an LS, I would go to once you're around 480 to 500 plus open pressure. 
I put the axle oiling in at that point. It's gonna give your axles much higher life, uh, more longevity, better reliability. All in all, it's a good win. Can't complain about it. Um, so again, to recap, Gatorman Lifter for your mild high performance deal, low 7,000 RPM, about 420 to 440 open pressure. If you wanna run more pressure than that and turn more RPM than that, step up to the axle oiling stuff. Now let's talk about short travel and I'm gonna make a little illustration for you guys. Okay, so let's pretend that we have taken this lifter, which has a plunger in it that the push rod travels on. See that little cup there? And we're gonna zoom really far in to this cross section. So here now, let's pretend that this is our main lifter body. We have our little sir clip up here to hold the plunger, and we have our plunger. Now, what makes these lifters hydraulic is that this plunger is floating on a hydraulic cushion of high pressure oil so that as the components of the engine wear in, as the thermal expansion takes place, this plunger can float hydraulically and compensate for those changes. Now, generally, we'll just use round numbers. Let's pretend that a standard LS lifter has 150 thou of total allowable plunger travel. So maybe we set it 30 thou in the hole and then we've got another 120 thou of oil volume or plunger travel beneath it. That works great for your standard application. All, honestly, you can use this type of lifter and get away with a lot of stuff, turn a lot of RPM, put a lot of string pressure on it. There is an upgrade available though for very select specific applications and that is the short travel variant where basically they cut all of this out of it, delete all of this and give the plunger a short travel. Now, when do you need this and why do you want this? Two reasons in my opinion. One, you're building a class legal race engine that must require lifter travel. And I'm saying that in quotes because in that case, the way we would set this up is we would get a super, uh, a slightly longer push rod and we would set the engine up to where the plunger is very low in its travel range. And effectively, the theory is that at really high RPM with really high spring pressure, the springs will bottom the plunger out in the lifter body, making it go solid. Now, that's all theory. It's kind of the gray area in the rules of class racing where your class may require hydraulic roller valve trains that have plunger travel, but you set it up to be solid. And that's 1% of the people who run short travel lifters. The other 99%, which is already only 5% of the whole hydraulic lifter market, would use this because they are pushing the limits of what a hydraulic lifter can do on the street or at the track. The theory is that by removing all this oil volume under the plunger and having very little oil volume under the plunger, if for whatever reason the oil system cavitates and sends air bubbles through the lifter and through the oil system of the motor, because there's very little oil underneath the plunger, there's less oil to be disturbed. And if cavitation does happen, the plunger will go solid again and you only lose a minimum amount of lift instead of potentially a hundred thou of lift. Second, it lets us set up a very thin oil cushion above the plunger, which helps the lifter react quicker if there's ever any valve train harmonic issues or valve float. So again, if you're gonna run a short travel lifter, you need to be very, very accurate with your push rod measurements because you have a very tight window to hit it correctly and still not have a noisy valve train. Or, you are pushing the envelope of what a hydraulic lifter can do and you need these extra features to retain those last five or 10 horsepower that you want to make. 90% of the people on the street, this lifter, standard travel, totally cool. I would only say go to a short travel if you're really pushing the limits, turning a lot of RPM and running a decent amount of spring pressure behind it. So, Things to be expected with short travel, again, your push rod length is hypercritical and hypercrucial because you have very little tolerance of air. 
and they are going to be noisier. They are going to be a little bit louder than a standard travel lifter because, again, if that plunger isn't dead center and where it's supposed to be, and you have like 10 thou play on either side, very, very small compared to almost 100 thou of play on this guy. Need to know what you're getting into. Moving on to the big boys. These are a pair of Jessel Pro solid offset tie bar DLC coated lifters. That is a mouthful if I've ever had one for a product. So, all of these lifters that I showed you are hydraulic. They're intended for street cars. They have basically no valve train maintenance, and they work great. You can turn 8,000 RPM, make a ton of power, and be totally happy. If you are turning so much RPM, or you require valve springs that are so stiff that they will overcome the hydraulic limits of this lifter, your next step is a set of solid lifters. These are pretty much the Mac Daddies in the tie bar world before you get into things like Carkridge, Keyway, really exotic stuff that we really don't need to get into because if you're at that level, you're probably not watching this video. So, these lifters are completely solid, which means that the body and the plunger is one piece. They do not move. These lifters require shaft mount rockers and will run lash meaning the rocker arm is actually loose from the valve tip and has a little bit of gap between it. These also come standard with, let me see where they put them on these. There it is. Of course, they have the high pin pressure oiling system. They are DLC coated. They're actually offset as well. These are my personal lifters for my next engine. And the intake port on that cylinder head is so big we have to offset the intake pushrod cup in the lifter to give us a better valve train angle of attack for the pushrod up to the rocker arm. And as well, the diameter of these is different than factory. So factory LS is 842 diameter, 0.842. These are 0.904, also known as 903s or 905s. And because it's a larger diameter, the block has to be specially machined. It's going to have a bushing sleeve in it. And that larger diameter lets us put a bigger axle with a larger axle diameter to help slow down the axle speed and give everything a lot more support inside the engine. Another thing, feature that these are going to have compared to these is all of these have a needle bearing axle design. So there's actual little needle bearings that support this axle and that ride on a cushion of oil. And that's what you want in a street car. The needle bearing tolerance is still extremely, extremely tight, but it will allow for some foreign debris to pass through it without causing any issue. These lifters, because they're going in a race only engine, actually have a bronze bushing in them. Now the bronze bushing is kind of more forgiving if it starts to fail, it'll still function for a long time before totally giving up the ghost, and hopefully you can hear something wrong before it totally lets go. If these ever start to lose needles, they're done. There's no saving it. You can't lose one and save a bunch. Once you lose one, the whole thing's coming apart. But again, because this is all bronze, it's a softer material, it's less forgiving. So every season, these come out of the engine, they get serviced, they get rebuilt, the bronze gets replaced, and they go back into life. These are only for the guys who are who need it. Let me put it that way. These are going to turn about 9,500 RPM. Um, this is race-only stuff. If you're doing streetcar stuff with these, I want to meet you because you're a madman. And um, I think that kind of wraps it up. So let me do a quick recap for those who are still sticking around. Stock lifter. Very mild performance, factory rebuild, nothing crazy, nothing special. Anything cool, right? Like 90% of you guys who have a cam, heads cam deal, you're turning 72, 7400 RPM, you've got some nice dual springs. These are under 500 bucks. They run great, they're super quiet. I have never hurt one of these, I've never had one break, and they're awesome. Stepping up. Lots of RPM, lots of spring pressure. Let's start adding some features. Axle oiling, short travel. We get some upgrades. Solid roller stuff. Again, this is max effort. You're really pushing the envelopes. And if you are, you're probably not watching this video because you're not even worried about this. You're just writing the check, whatever it costs. Let me get it. For those who don't know, these are almost 2,000 bucks for a set of these. It's a totally different world when you start playing max effort. So I 
think that pretty much wraps up our lifter breakdown video. Hope you guys learned something from this. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you want us to show or teach on camera. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.